Hi, this is Dr. Swarup Pal here. I am the Chief CVTS Surgeon at Dr. L.H. Hiranandani Hospital in Mumbai. Prior to this, I was a consultant with Apollo Hospitals Chennai. So today I have been given a very interesting and intriguing topic called heart failure. This is a topic which is of great interest to us because it is a very significant problem in the world of today. So let's talk about heart failure. Before we start with heart failure, let us first understand what the heart is all about. So the heart as we all know is an organ which right from the time we are born continuously keeps pumping throughout our life. Now the heart, it has four compartments or four chambers. There are two chambers which are up and there are two chambers which are below. During life, both the chambers do not contract simultaneously. First the upper chamber contracts, then the lower one does it. So this sequence which is maintained, how does it maintain? So there is an electrical circuit inside the heart which maintains these sequence. Apart from this, the blood flows in an orderly fashion thanks to this sequence which is maintained inside the heart. So all the blood throughout the body comes to the right side of the heart, the right upper chamber, from that it comes to the right lower chamber. Then it goes to the lungs, it gets oxygenated and it comes back onto the left side of the heart. The left side of the heart now pumps this blood throughout the body. Let me quickly show you a model. Here in this case, this is the upper chamber. This is the right side of the heart and this is the left side of the heart. This is the upper chamber from which the blood... Now there are two tubes. One is the pulmonary artery carrying the blood to the lungs and the other one is the aorta which arises from the left side and this supplies the blood throughout the body. Now within the chambers as you can see these are some partitions. These are called valves. The valves are like doors which open and shut and they also help in maintaining the flow of blood in one single direction. Now coming back to heart failure. Failure. Well, we all have heard this term failure. I mean, as parents, we would have told our children that you are not doing this thing properly. So what does the word failure mean? It means the inability to perform according to your own potential or inability to probably achieve the goal or the function that you were meant to. Similarly, in heart failure, the heart is not able to pump effectively and thus the blood that is required to be supplied to different parts of the body isn't. Now, heart failure can result from a number of causes. But why is this such a big problem? Well, let us talk about numbers. The most important thing is there are 5 lakh people currently affected with heart failure. Well, 5 lakh is a huge number. What is most significant is this results in 3 lakh of deaths every year. Now that's, that's a very big number. So if we have such a substantial population su suffering from the disease, it is better that we take care, identify it early and then see how we can treat it. So coming down to our talk today, the first thing that we understand is what causes heart failures. Now there are different causes of heart failure but the commonest is coronary artery disease. What is coronary artery disease and what are the coronaries? Well the coronaries are the blood vessels that supply blood to the heart. The heart has to work continuously 24 by 7. It also needs nutrients. Where does it come from? The coronaries. Now the coronary arteries supply blood to the heart. Now these blood vessels fits time can also develop blockages as we see here. This is a normal coronary artery. This is an early blockage which is developing and this is a coronary which has got blocked almost 90%. Now this guy is going to get a heart attack. So coronary artery disease resulting in heart attacks. These are the commonest causes of heart failure in the world. Apart from this, what are the other causes? Well, as I said, there are valves inside the heart which maintain an unidirectional flow of blood. If the valve narrows down, we call it stenosis, or if the valve starts leaking, blood leaks from one chamber to another. Both these conditions again result in enlargement of the heart. The heart is not able to perform its function properly and that can result in heart failure. After that, there is something called myocarditis. What is myocarditis? Well, you all know about COVID. COVID is something that we have brazen since last two years. COVID infection or any viral infection can also affect the heart. When it affects the heart muscle, it weakens the muscle and heart failure results. This is called myocarditis. This is another important cause of heart failure in the last two years. Apart from that, there are children who are born with different lesions in the heart, a hole in the heart, different anatomy. This is called congenital heart disease. Well, that is also a cause of heart failure. Apart from that, again, arrhythmias are an important cause. There are so many times you must have seen someone who complains of palpitations. He is resting right now and still the heart rate is very fast. These arrhythmias cause increase in oxygen consumption, increase in working of the heart and also can result in heart failure. 
then there are drugs that are used to treat diseases very commonly diseases used to drugs used to treat cancer like breast cancer lung cancer these drugs have side effects on the heart and can result in heart failure then there is a group of conditions which we call cardiomyopathies cardiomyopathies are conditions where the heart muscle is primarily affected and therefore a heart failure results cardiomyopathy most commonly is ischemic cardiomyopathy which i said result due to heart attacks coronary artery disease but in certain conditions like post pregnancy some women can also have a cardiomyopathy of the heart this is called peripartum cardiomyopathy these all things also result in heart failure apart from that some bad habits like alcohol consumption second drug consumption people have a lot of cocaine methamphetamine all these are important causes of heart failure they directly affect the heart so in tropical countries like africa there are parasitic infestations like chagas disease these also affect the heart and cause heart failure so now that we've gone through the causes of heart failure let us understand how would this patient present to us so as a clinician when i usually sit in my opd the patient comes he is usually huffing puffing quite distressed he tells me doc i have the shortness of breath since last 3 months so shortness of breath is a very common presenting feature the other than shortness of breath the patient can also present with chest pain if it was a heart attack the patient says that i have developed swelling over the feet and all over the body this is another common presenting feature in advanced levels of heart failure the patient has ascites ascites means swelling of the abdomen due to collection of fluid all these happens due to a pressure on the heart back pressure causing accumulation of fluid in the lungs and all over the body so again accumulation of fluid over the body weight gain swelling over the limbs uh, chest pain shortness of breath these are all manifestations of heart failure a very common manifestation is easy fatigability the patient feels very tired very fatigued quite easily so that is another cause of another way that the patient presents to us with heart failure now after we have seen these patients coming to our opd the next stage is to diagnose them well how do you diagnose them one clinically obviously looking at the presentation you can understand what is he suffering from now once we understand this we have to supplement this with a few more tests so the commonest tests that are done are one is an ecg echo ecg tells you about the rhythm of the heart echo or echocardiogram is a very very important test now the echocardiogram is like a sonography that we do for other parts of the body in echocardiogram they put a scanner over the heart your heart is scanned all the four chambers can be seen very clearly so we can see how much is the pumping function of the heart now this pumping function is very important for gradation of heart failure as well as for prognostication like in the days to come we say the heart failure is getting better or worse depending on the heart pumping this is called ejection fraction normally it's about 60 to 80 but in guys in with heart failure it usually goes below 25% and that is when they become more symptomatic apart from that the echo also tells us about the dimensions of the different chambers of the heart any abnormality structural abnormality of the heart so the echo is a very important investigation then we do a blood test there is a simple blood test called nt pro bnp which gives us the level of heart failure if the nt pro bnp is very high the heart failure is usually in an advanced stage and with treatment this level should come down so we use this to monitor the treatment also and the response of the patient to treatment after that if we feel it is necessary we do a cardiac mri this is very commonly done and has to be done in all patients who are put on the transplant pathway so i'll come to that also when our patients put on a transplant pathway but cardiac mri is another very good investigation which talks about the heart and it exactly tells us and shows us how the muscles of the heart are it can also give us a differential diagnosis in certain cases now coming back to heart failure now how would this be treated so doctor i have seen how a patient presents to me what how do i diagnose it next comes treatment how do i treat this patient well first line of management is always medical management so we put him on certain drugs which improve the contractility of the heart decrease the amount of fluid which is retained by the body these are called diuretics so they decrease the fluid which are present in the lungs the excess of fluid which is all over the body apart from that there are certain good drugs which were not available earlier but they actually improve the contractility of the heart and decrease the work of the heart we use those now next is treatment of the cause 
Suppose if heart failure was the result of a heart blockage, then we either do an angioplasty or we do a bypass surgery and we treat that. Apart from that, if it was because of a valve problem, then we either repair or replace the valve. If all the surgical causes are taken care of and yet the heart is not in a situation where we can offer him a primary treatment as surgery, then last comes transplants. Now what happens is these hearts who are posted for transplants are the hearts which have a very bad shape. The EF or the ejection fraction is very low. Uh, in such cases, there are only two modalities. One is, there is something called artificial hearts which we have these days. In artificial hearts or ventricular assist devices, they assist the ventricle. So we attach them to one side of the heart and they help in pumping. Now this can be used for a short period of time till we get a heart for a transplant or this can also be used as a destination therapy where this can go on for at least 7-10 years till we get another heart. Now in transplant what is done is uh, once a patient has no other treatment modality left and he's put on the transplant pathway we have to do certain investigations we have to see his blood group and then we have to list him. Once a patient is listed, we have to wait till we get a heart of the same blood group. Once we get a heart of the same blood group, we do certain antibody titles and then if we feel that yes, this is a fit, then the heart from that person is harvested and then we get it and then we insert it inside the recipient. Now the interesting thing about transplants as you would probably see in the next video is it has to be done very fast. We just have four hours to take out the heart and put it inside. But once you are given a new heart, obviously there is something called immunosuppression to take care of. And after that, the heart behaves like a normal heart. People with a transplanted heart do have a lifespan of more than 10 years. So that is something which was a very great boon for all these patients. So that is how the heart failure spectrum works. So starting from a simple medical line of therapy, to specific particular surgery uh, depending on the disease concern and the last part being transplants. So I hope in short you guys have understood and let's hope that this helped you in some way. Thank you.